congruent, concentric, tangent circles, and we have three theorems. This is 12.1b, so it's part two of lesson 12.1. If you missed the first part, just click on the description and you'll see a link. So for your notes, congruent circles are two circles that have congruent radii. And circle A is congruent to circle B. If AC, the segment AC is congruent to segment BD, and the converse, segment AC is congruent to segment BD, if circle A is congruent to circle B. Two circles are congruent circles if and only if they have congruent radii. Concentric circles are coplanar circles with the same center. They're on the same plane with the same center point. And we discussed in the last video, 12.1a, that this line L is tangent to circle A. It's in the same plane and intersects circle A at one point right here. That's the point of tangency, isn't it, that green dot? Tangent circles are two coplanar circles that intersect at exactly one point. If one circle is contained inside the other, they're internally tangent. If not, they're externally tangent. So here we have internally tangent circles. Circle B is inside circle A. And here we have externally tangent circles. B is outside of circle A. I'm going to take a look at this diagram. We have circle B is inside circle A. It's internally tangent, isn't it? We can see we have this line here. Well, the radius of circle A, the bigger one, is 4. Its center is at negative 1, 0, and a point on the circle is 3, 0. And the distance between these two points is 4. We can count the units, 1, 2, 3, 4. For radius B, the smaller circle, it's 2. Its center is at 1, 0, right here, and a point on the circle is 3, 0, and the distance between these two points is 2. It's 2 units. The point of tangency is 3, 0, right here. It's the point where the circles and tangent line intersect. And the equation of the tangent line is x is equal to 3. There's a vertical line through 3 for x and 0 for y. A common tangent is a line that is tangent to two circles. So here we have two circles, circle A and circle B. We have line L, line M. Well, lines L and M are common external tangents to circle A and circle B. They're external because they're on the outside of the two circles. And here lines P and Q are common internal tangents to circle A and circle B because they're on the inside here. See? These are on the outside, so they're external. These are on the inside, so they're internal. Looking at this bicycle, the wheels of the bicycle are tangent to the road, and the spokes on the wheels represent radii. And the tangent line is perpendicular to the radius at the point of tangency. So for your notes, we have our first theorem. It says if a line is tangent to a circle, then it's perpendicular to the radius drawn at the point of tangency. Looking at this, Line L is tangent to circle A. And our conclusion that is line L is perpendicular to segment AB. We can write it in a proof in notation as line drawn to circle, therefore line perpendicular to radius. We have our second theorem, and it says if a line is perpendicular to the radius of a circle at a point on the circle, then the line is tangent to the circle. So here we have line M. It's tangent to the circle. CD is perpendicular to M. M is perpendicular to segment CD at D. 
Our conclusion is that m is tangent to circle c. We can write it in a proof and notation as line perpendicular to radius, therefore line tangent to circle. The summit of Mount Everest is approximately 29,000 feet above sea level. So what's the distance from the summit, that's the top, to the horizon to the nearest mile? So it's giving us a hint that Earth's radius is about 4,000 miles and that 5,280 feet is a mile. Looking at this, here is the distance from the center to the horizon. This segment right here, EH, is what we would be looking for. What we need to find, the length of an imaginary segment from the summit to Earth's horizon. From the summit to the Earth's horizon. So what we do is we make a plan to solve it. We can draw a diagram like I have. And we use the hint info right here. We're going to let C be Earth's center, C for center. We're going to let E be the summit for Everest. And we're going to let H be the point on the horizon, H for horizon. We know segment CD must be about 4,000 because that's a radius. If CH is 4,000, then CD must be 4,000, right? We need to find EH, which is tangent to C at H. And by theorem 12.1.1, segment EH is perpendicular to CH, so triangle CHE is a right triangle. So the third thing we do is we solve it. This little part right here, ED, this little segment, is 29,000 feet. That's from the horizon to the summit of Mount Everest. We need to convert the feet to miles. This is in feet. We know 5,280 feet is one mile, so that's our conversion factor. And we find that Mount Everest is approximately 5.49 miles from the horizon to its summit. So that would be ED right here. We know CD is 4,000 miles, so CH must be 4,000 miles. They're both radius. We get EC, this entire orange line, is equal to CD plus ED. That's the segment addition postulate we learned way back in the beginning of geometry. So 4,000 plus the 5.9 is going to equal the entire thing, EC. And using the Pythagorean theorem, EC squared is going to be equal to CH squared plus EH squared. We know EC is 4,005.49. We square it and get 16,043,950.14. And 4,000 squared is 16 million. Plus EH squared is going to equal this EC squared. And solving for EH, we subtract the 16 million from each side and get 43,950.14 is approximately EH squared. Take the little 2 exponent away by putting a radical around this side. We find the square root of 43,950.14 and we get 209.64288, which it wanted it rounded to the nearest mile, so it's about 210 miles. So we know EH is about 210 miles. We've got our third theorem. It says if two segments are tangent to a circle from the same external point, then the segments are congruent. So we have AB and AC, and they're tangent to circle P from the same point A. These segments must be congruent. Our conclusion is that segment AB is congruent to AC. We can write it in a proof in notation as two segments tangent to circle from same external point, therefore segments congruent. And we can use that theorem 12.1.3 to find the length of segments drawn tangent to a circle from an exterior point. So we have segment DE right here and df, they're tangent to circle C, and de is equal to df, two segments tangent to circle from same exter external point, therefore segments congruent. 
So if this is equal to this, we can write an equation setting 5y minus 28 is equal to 3y, and we can solve it for y. We can subtract 3y from both sides and set the equation to equal 0, then add 28 to both sides and get 2y is equal to 28. Divide both sides by this 2 coefficient, and we get that 1y is equal to 14. Now, if y is equal to 14, we can multiply it times 3 here and get that df is 42. And since df is equal to segment DE, segment DE is equal to 42. For the third part of this lesson, 12.1c, we're going to construct a tangent to a circle at a point. And for the fourth part of this lesson, we're going to talk about circle graphs in 12.1d. Sorry about the reflection on the board. When we have sunny days, you can see my window and the reflection. I hope you're doing well, and keep trying, and I'll see you next time. Bye.